Welcome to our Five on Five. Please be joined today in studio by Senator Jeff Merkley. Senator, thanks for taking the time and joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure to be with you. So you and your fellow Democrats are obviously up in arms over the Supreme Court potentially overturning Roe v. Wade. The Women's Health Protection Act was blocked this week. What happens next? Well, what happens now is everyone's taken a position. It's been recorded and it's really puts it on the ballot this coming November. President Biden said inflation is his top domestic priority. How do Democrats fix this? Well, we really have to tackle so many sources of this inflation. And take, for example, that last year the oil companies here in America made $205 billion in profit. In other words, when we're paying those really high prices at the pump, it's not because the oil is that expensive, it's because the oil companies are gouging us so badly. It's why I'm supporting the windfall profits tax to change that. As, of course, with costs going up, some necessities like baby formula are getting harder to find. I know President Biden talked about this today. How can Washington help, or more specifically in your arena, the Senate? You know, in this case, you have the challenge of a company where the market is very consolidated. So there's only a few producers, so when one of them factory shuts down to problems that they experienced, they had to do a recall, uh, it's, a, it's a big shortage. It's one of the reasons that we really should avoid having production consolidated to just a couple companies. And this is where we haven't had antitrust over the last 20 years that prevented mergers that consolidated a, park, a market between just a couple companies. And then when one of them has a problem of like, like this, uh, we pay the, the price. And I'm really concerned about the little children who uh, are allergic to other varieties of formula. Uh, this is, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a big problem. This should never have been allowed to happen in the first place. The primary in Oregon, of course, is coming up on Tuesday. What do you think of the Democratic race between Tina Kotek and Tobias Reed? You know, first, I want to encourage everybody to vote. I think somehow uh, with COVID and all and all the challenges we faced, uh, it, people are a little disengaged from the elections, but elections do matter. Both of those individuals are friends who I think are very competent. Uh, I'm not endorsing in, in the race, and we'll know after Tuesday who's going to be on the, the ballot in November. You stole my follow-up. I was going to ask if you wanted to issue an endorsement, so I appreciate that. What other race or races are you watching closely on Tuesday? Well, it's very interesting to see the situation with our new congressional uh, district. And one of the things I'm very concerned about is dark money in campaigns. And we have one race here in Oregon in the 6th Congressional District where we have a dark money pack that has put in millions of dollars on behalf of, of, of one candidate. And um, that candidate hasn't voted in 30 of the last 32 elections. And yet, when the money is so out of balance, how do citizens really find out what's going on? Senator, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here joined in studio by Senator Jeff Merkley. Senator, it was a year ago that the Fed started a process to identify what areas along the Oregon coast would be good for offshore wind leasing. What does this mean to the southern Oregon coast, and are you in favor of it? Well, here's what has to happen. There has to be an incredibly intense dialogue with our fishing community. I mean, there's a lot of anxiety over the federal government coming in and uh, rolling over the top of established industries, industries that are very important to our state, very important to our communities. And offshore wind would be different here in Oregon than many places because it would be a, a floating wind turbines. But what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of how they're anchored and, and the electrical cables and how could that affect fishing? And so no way should a big project be undertaken. Uh, I do support the idea of an intense dialogue followed by a pilot project to figure out if we can make our fishing and renewable energy offshore wind compatible. And with that, we might be able to expand. You and Senator Wyden helped deliver $5 million for the Joint System Canal Piping Project here in the Medford area. What stands out to you most about the site that you toured today? Well, I can tell you this was exciting. Uh, this is uh, funding that, that came through uh, the Interior Committee. Uh, it is uh, something, a project both Senator Wyden and I, I supported. And uh, this type of piping is essential because we have to treat water as a resource that is in short supply. We've had years of drought. We are seeing farmers change practices. Doing this type of piping in place of open ditches, it saves a lot of water that would otherwise evaporate, water that would go into the ground. And because it's pressurized, it's allowing the farmers to switch in many places uh, from pumping and flooding uh, to sprinkler systems that are, uh, 
the pressure, because they're pressurized, they don't even have to uh, pump the water or, or uh, use mechanic other energy to drive the, the sprinklers. So it can be a real win-win. And speaking of water, of course, uh, Klamath Basin irrigators and ranchers, farmers, a lot of concern, of course, about the little amount of water. What is your message to those people who may be watching? Well, I've been working with them ever since I, I came into to, uh, the Senate office uh, to partner with them. Their best ideas, I'm trying to get resources to assist them as I have through drought after, after drought, resources to assist and try and improve the health of the lake, uh, to uh, help the two uh, species uh, of suckers that are endangered in the lake survive, assisting the, the, the ranchers and the farmers and the tribe and the fishermen all to have dialogue together to figure out their future. They have to generate the solutions, but I know Senator Wyden and I will want to do everything we can to support them. And you helped secure a more than million dollar federal grant for Medford's Kid Time, uh, a lot of it to do with early childhood education. Why did you put your efforts into this project? Yeah, so this is the exciting thing about this year. It's the first time in 10 years that we've had what used to be called earmarks. I don't call them earmarks, I call them community initiated projects because they're projects initiated by the community. And so they come up with them. It's fully transparent. You can see what they are. And then I fight for them. And I was able to get about 147 projects funded around Oregon in all types of, of categories. And uh, it's nice to see things happening where the citizens said, this is what we really need. And certainly that's a great example. Senator, we always appreciate the time when you're in town. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good to be here in person. Stay with us. We'll be right back.